Lavinia Will Willoughby, I think her name is. Lavinia Willoughby suffered from the delusion that she was Mary Queen of Scots. Delusional patients generally build intricate structures to support their beliefs. They frequently believe they are a romantic figure from the past whose circumstances can be ma mapped against their own. This form of illness should not be confused with much rare multiple personality disorder. Miss Wallaby's original treatment plan called for fever therapy. When that proved ineffective, she was put on a mild shock program, which first took the form of metrazole injections and finally insulin treatment. Schizophrenia. <clears throat> what the general public thinks of as schizophrenia or split personality is actually a much rarer disorder called multiple personality disorder of which only a few hundred cases have ever been authenticated. True schizophrenia from which Miss Willoughby suffered is a much more common disease striking about three persons per thousand. It is the largest single cause of admissions to mental hospitals. The principal symptoms of schizophrenia are delusions, hallucinations, incoherent thought processes, and a withdrawal from reality. Four general types are recognized, disorganized, catatonic, paranoid, and undifferentiated. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, one second. Hi, Poke. I burned my finger really, really, really bad earlier, and now it's just, it just constantly feels like it's on fire. it and it felt better and then all of a sudden now it literally feels like it's being burned again like it feels like it's on fire anyway i have a nice pack so i'm back um oh yeah multiple personality disorder an extremely rare condition in which two or more independent personalities develop in the same individual the patient is generally aware of only one of those these personalities at a time this was not the case with miss wallaby she consistently believed she was mary queen of scots from day to day and did not lapse into her original or other identities treatment for the condition is generally aimed at reintegrating the personalities into one usually by encouraging the dominant personality to recognize the existence of the other and by removing the underlying cause of the original disassociation yeah i have borderline I have BPD, a borderline personality disorder. Not the same thing as multiple. <clears throat> Mary, Queen of Scots, was one of the most romantic figures in history. She was crowned Queen of Scotland before her first birthday. At age 15, she married the King of France. At age 15? Oh, my God. But returned to Scotland after he died two years later. Okay, woo woo fucking w many viewed her as the rightful queen of england instead of elizabeth the first and it was the many schemes and plots to place her on england's throne that eventually led to her execution womp womp that's not good for the last 18 years of her life she lived as elizabeth's prisoner in a series of castles it was hardly a life of privation she had 50 50 retainers in her household and she was more like a house guest of her jailer George Talbot, the sixth Earl of Shrewsbury. It was only with great reluctance that Elizabeth eventually succumbed to political pressure and ordered her cousin to be beheaded. The order was carried out in the Great Hall at Fothering, Fothering, Fothering Hay Castle. Mary was only 44. Poor Mary never stood a fucking chance. Never stood a fucking chance. She was crowned the Queen of Scotland before her first birthday, this poor girl. And then when she's 15, she married the King of France. Oh, God. This poor girl. Oh, my God, that's terrible. <clears throat> Ms. Willoughby was an accomplished seamstress, embroiderer, and weaver. 
as witnessed by the beautiful tapestries <laughs> around the wall and the exquisite handkerchief you see here. Her handkerchief is missing. This is the room of Lavinia Willoughby, whom the staff called Vi. She was severely delusional and believed she was Mary, Queen of Scots. Her family indulged her in this delusion and paid for the special furnishings you see here. Oh. The likeness is remarkable. I have never known a painter to have such skill. Oh yeah, she wants her knitting needles. The tapestries are delicate. Please do not disturb them. I'm looking at them, you meanie pants. <clears throat> the tapestries are... Perhaps it would look better nearer the fireplace. It needs a good sweeping. What are you looking up there for? There's work to be done. <laughs> Tomorrow, you should give it a good washing. You know very well it cannot be opened. It is fine where it is, thank you. It has a wobbly leg. Perhaps you can <coughs> fix it. It is fine where... You may leave it alone. I am not yet ready to retire. Girl, I got something to tell you. I got something to tell you. The tapestry. You you already retired, honey. Perhaps you retired from life because you're you're dead, honey. You're you're dead. <clears throat> Don't be impertinent. Impertinent? You may leave it. What the fuck does that mean? The tapestry. The items on the desk are private. And do not concern you. Mm. The items on the desk. But I want to look. And feel. I'm a looker and a feeler. So we're supposed to find her knitting needles, I think. Let me exhaust the dialogue with her again, because I don't quite remember. What happened to your last pair? <laughs> they were taken from me by Sir George. Actually, they weren't proper knitting needles at all. They were curious eating sticks from the Orion. They work oh, just the as chopsticks, well. gotcha. Activity, one must improvise. What will you do with them? It is how I pass the time. All the needlepoint and tapestries you see around you, I made them. It's locked. It's locked. Yes, Oliver? What made me climb into that heat chamber? The lighter has an evil all its own. You fell under its spell. I don't believe it. That is one of the only two logical explanations, Oliver. The other is that you yourself are going insane. Which do you prefer? I must have set these traps for myself. It is curious that you never seem to be in so much trouble that you can't get out. It's almost as if it has been managed that way. Thanks, Malcolm. You're real fucking helpful. You son of a bitch. It's exit. No, exit. Oh my god, I'm lost. Get me the fuck out of here. You gotta go back to the basement? What the hell do I need to do? Um, the kitchen. The kitchen. I'm gonna go, actually, I'm gonna go to one. No, fuck, it's two. Marilyn isn't two. She is this way. She's in here. There she is. Oh. Oh, we can't say anything to her. Anything new to her. 
Okay. Um, no, this is- no, this is- oh god. Okay, go this way. No. No, this way. Okay. Go to... Um, the basement. Um, can I talk to Jane? Yes? Nope. I mean, yeah, but we already exhausted that dialogue. Um, furnace room. Where's what's his face? Where the fuck is what's his face? Where the fuck is he? How do I talk to him? Where is he? How do I talk to him? How do I talk to him? How do I talk to him? Where the fuck is he? Oh my god, it's over. How do I talk to the man? Ay ay ay. There's a guy in here. Or there was a guy in here. Okay, whatever. We'll leave. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get me out. No. Get me out of here. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go to level one. <laughs> We're playing a... I think this game's from 1998. It's a point and click game. Fuck. <clears throat> Your mother d Stop. That was taken on your third birthday. 424. You and your sister Mallory. 55. The day you were born was the most important day of my life. 424.55. I feel like that's going to be important. Let me look up. What's your face? Uh, Lativia Wilbur or whatever the fuck her name is. Uh, Lavinia? Lavinia? I wrote down her name. Huh? Oh, wait. No, wait. Maybe I didn't do this right. Okay. Never mind. Um, um. <clears throat> what the fuck is her name? Hi. All right, let's leave. I thought I had to come here, but I doubt it's gonna fucking tell me anything. Oh my god. Get an interface. Um, let's go here and let's go in the kitchen. Now that I have a thingy, <clears throat> where's the save? Got everything for the sub, 56 months. Howie, Zowie, hot damn. Place views. Yippee. Mm. Doesn't budge. Oh. That got cold in a hurry. Well, it is a freezer. So I can't open that. I thought I... I thought I... Oi, oi, oi. Seems fine now. <clears throat> Maybe... I can... 
open that thing in the thing and the stuff and the thing and the down and we go 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 down to the basement again and we gotta go over here and there and here and here and there and turn around and hopefully nope not wrong place wrong place <clears throat> that's a new one that is you won't what? find a key for it on that big ring of yours You'll need more than your bare hands for that. Mm. That's a new one. Hmm. Hacksaw. I'm thinking that would work a mite better if it had a blade in it. Oi. I don't know where to get a fucking blade. What the goddamn. It's over. Long and sharp. These could hurt someone if you weren't careful. Right? Like, can I combine the this with this? Hello? It's not looking too good. Too promising. Good evening, Zach. Oi. Okay. Level two. No. God, get me in there. Okay, level two. <clears throat> okay, go and here and this way and this way and in here. <clears throat> and give, I'm supposed to give her, I'm supposed to give her the, my, this. Excellent. <clears throat> Just put them in the box with the rest of my sewing things. Okay. At last, at last, you are more than a servant. You are a friend. Thank oh. you for providing me the only implements by which my imprisonment becomes tolerable. Okay. Why do you call him your host? George Talbot, the Earl of Shrewsbury. This is his castle. He has been commissioned by my cousin, Queen Elizabeth, to detain me. Little does she know that he brings dishonor upon both our royal houses. What does he do? He tortures me. He takes me to the dungeon and uses a key with a skull pattern on it to open a small room. There he forces foul emetics and purgatives down my throat. Sometimes he bleeds me until I am dizzy and become faint. What does he hope to gain? He wishes me to confess to conspiracies against my dear cousin. When I refuse to do so, he opens a special casket he sometimes has with him. Inside are vials filled with poisons that give me fevers and chills. Have you told anyone else about this? Only Lorena, the prisoner next door. She's very difficult to talk to, but she knows more than she's willing to say. She is heavily guarded, but the key to her part of the prison has the number 26 engraved on it. Is there anything I can do to help? It is all a horrible misunderstanding. My cousin thinks I plot with the King of Spain against her. If only I could write to her and send a token of my affection, she would realize how wrong she is. 
Can't you get her a message? To do so, I need a pen and some ink, both of which are currently denied me. It sounds as if you have something particular in mind. I have embroidered a special handkerchief for her. It is the finest craftsmanship, and it has the letter R worked into the corner. And now you can't find it? Alas, Sir George has stolen it from me. I suspect he has hidden it within his casket of poisons. But where that may be, I have no idea. Elizabeth doesn't begin with R. <laughs> I forget you are a servant, unschooled in Latin. R is for Regina, which means queen. I must find him before dawn. Just as you aid me, so shall I aid you. It is hand... I must have a pen. It is handsome, isn't it? It was given to me by Lord Darnley. The desk? The desk is him. Okay. It shows me coming to Scotland. I had been Queen of France until my husband died. I was only 18. It is the Siege of Calais. I wove it myself. 18 years now I have slept in that bed. I hope I do not die in it. Uh... I hate to break it to you. <laughs> oh. Aren't you the saucy one? My well, not. But if Sir George were to find out, we would both regret it. Where did my walnut go? I dropped it. Oh, it's gone forever. Goodbye, walnut. It shows the legend of William Wallace, who led an army into hell to free the hero, Fionn Mac Cumhale. It is the bloody battle of Bannockburn, where Robert the Bruce drove back the English from Scottish soil forever. The stone is Carrara marble, from Italy. Many an hour have I sat there and done my needlework. Many an hour, Jesus Christ. Fucking ye old in English, my god. The likeness is rem That is where my handkerchief belongs. That key opens it right up. It's locked. Ward 7. Alright. Freddy's tired, Dad. Maybe he can take a nap, Josh. It's way past his bedtime. He told me he's too scared to sleep. I'm scared, too. I know, Josh. But everything will be okay. I'll be there as soon as I can. How the fuck- Are you one of Malcolm's spies? Go away. How the fuck are we talking to Josh? Like, I don't understand. How the fuck are we talking to him? Even in the hospital, one must have one's privacy. It is a piece by a new artist, Derek Becker. It's a tendril design after a Gregoire original. Artificial, unfortunately. The pots come from Prinish Abbey, near Painswick in England. It's black lacquer on walnut. Quite attractive, but it shows every speck of dust. The pots come... They are part of the set given to me by my mother. They were given to me by my mother. They were designed by Mies van der Rohe just before he did the Barcelona chair. Who the fuck are these people? 
Wee oui, wee oui, omelette de Vermont. It is an early study by Degas. Degas. The goth er. I would be lost without my novels of Henry James. Twilight. The collected poems of Wordsworth, a first edition. The inscription says, My dear Miss Martin, Earth has not anything to show more fair. On regards, Mark Kendall. I should have been worried from the start. The quotation he selected actually referred to some buildings. No, I know. I know that. My father <laughs> gave me that locket on my 16th birthday. He died only a week later. Damn. It is hideous. It doesn't match the decor at all. This locket was the gift of an unknown admirer to Miss Martin. Unknown admirer? It was my father. They are from Paris. The latest fashion. People suffering from paranoia frequently believe others intend to do them harm, and they devise elaborate defenses against these imagined onslaughts. Miss Martin, for example, always wore these gloves to prevent her enemies from poisoning her through the exposed skin of her hands. Ridiculous. I wore the gloves because I liked them. Stop. You must leave them alone. Lorena. The patient in this room who wished to be known only as Lorena suffered from paranoia and unreasoning fear that people were plotting against her. Lorena was a wealthy woman and an active member of high society at the time she was committed. She developed the unfounded fear that her husband was unfaithful to her, an obsession that quickly grew out of control. At her admission interview, she claimed her husband was having her in prison so he could gain control of her money, an accusation typical of the paranoid syndrome. Lorena was one of Dr. Metcalf's few private patients. His treatment plan for her consisted almost exclusively of electroconvulsive therapy. Paranoid schizophrenia. Paranoia is one of the four major subcategories of schizophrenia. People who suffer from it believe without justification that others are plotting against them or are otherwise persecuting or trying to harm them. The paranoid patient is preoccupied with doubts about the loyalty or trustworthiness of friends or associates and is reluctant to confide in others because of fear that the information will be used maliciously against her. Lorena suffered from a particular type of paranoia called delusional jealousy which causes the patient to delusionally believe their spouse is having sexual relations with someone else. She was probably valid. Electroconvulsive therapy. Even with the advent of modern pharmaceutical drug treatments, Electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, still remains one of the most effective weapons in the battle against mental illness. Though publicly denounced and unfairly stigmatized in movies such as One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the treatment is human humanly administered and is still in widespread use today. Although no theoretical foundation has been discovered for its success... Electroshock is considered safer, easier to administer, less expensive, and easier on the patient than metrazole shock treatments. Originally administered for all classifications of schizophrenia, it is now recognized that ECT should only be used in treatment of severe depression. <clears throat> all right. Those things are private. Please leave them alone. They are salves and creams prescribed by some of the <laughs> finest doctors in the East. I have sensitive skin. Girl, same. I always keep the shades drawn. It is so gloomy out there. Don't. You never know who might be outside watching. <laughs> it's Florentine leather. It's Florent. Fancy. It's Florent. It's Florent. I always. They are. 
are sad. It's fl It's fl It's fl Okay. Don't be Those things are private. Don't be rude. The prints are from an oriental gallery in Boston. I forgot the name. Art Deco with Zuni influence. I bought the carpets in Santa Fe. They were designed by Mies Van... The prints are from an oriental gallery. Okay. A woman of breeding does not discuss her sleeping arrangements. That's your bed? What the fuck? Dickens. I find him wonderfully soporific. <clears throat> it's from the 1929 Paris exhibit. <clears throat> Does not look comfortable. It's a Giuliano original. My eyes are failing. The glass makes it easier to read. I love Poe. He's so mysterious. The inscription reads, Meryl, this should keep you up a few nights. Love, Wendy. A gift from my sister. Her sense of humor can only be described as macabre. <laughs> Cute. Who are you? What do you want? I'm looking for my son, Joshua. You won't find him here, young man. I'm a friend. I don't believe you. Everyone here works for Malcolm. He is an evil man. Very clever. That's just what one of his spies would say. Yeah. She's dead. What can I do to convince you? Very well. I shall give you a chance. Malcolm has stolen many things from me. <clears throat> he keeps most of them hidden away. And some he has given to others. But one of them he keeps on display, knowing the pain it causes me. Bring me that item, and I will know you are not in league with him. So we're in, um, we're in a museum that was previ previously an asylum, but it's being made, it's currently being made into a museum. So, the halls, the rooms where the patients would live, right, have been made into these rooms for the museum that like the it families is it is hideous it doesn't match the decor at all the families um gave permission for them to like share about the patients um so that's why like we read we read about her here and it tells us about, like, what she had and how she was being, quote-unquote, treated. And then we see two of her, like, favorite items or whatever. But every time we go into a room, one of the items is missing. Um. But, yeah, the, the people here are dead. They died here. In the asylum. <clears throat> Fancy. <clears throat> hmm. Pretty handy for seeing as someone sneaking up behind you. Huh. Liquid eyeliner. Doesn't look too useful. Fancy. No. Liquid eyeliner. Wow, still wet after all these years. Not much good with eye. I guess the liquid part is in there. It's locked.
Can't you get her a message? To do so, I need a pen and some ink, both of which are currently denied me. Nothing kind of charming about the look of this. Yeah, that's why I picked it up because I like these like older style point and click games. They just have a lot of charm visually. Yes, Oliver. Okay. Um. <clears throat> it's heavier than it looks. I love Poe. Okay, wait, I want to read this again. Description reads, Meryl, this should keep you up a few nights. Love, Wendy. A gift from my sister. Her sense of humor can only be described as macabre. Hmm. It's black la- No. The collected poems of Wordsworth. A first the inscription says, My dear Miss Martin, Earth has not anything to show more fair. Lorena Martin. Regards, Mark Kendall. Mark Kendall. I should have been worried from the start. The quotation he selected actually referred to some buildings. Okay. Yes, Oliver. <clears throat> Giuliano makes all <clears throat> his creations from genuine ostrich. I didn't realize these things were so stiff. I didn't realize. The inscription says, My dear Miss Martin, Earth has not anything to show more fair. Fond regards, Mark Kendall. I should have. I don't understand. The inscription says, I should have. I would be. The inscription. I should have been. A gift from my sister. Fuck. The inscription reads, Meryl, this should keep you up a few nights. Love, Wendy. A gift from my sister. Her sense of humor can only be described as macabre. Meryl. Meryl Martin. Meryl Martin. M. M. Malcolm Metcalf? It's black lacquer on walnut. 
quite attractive, <clears throat> but it shows every speck of dust. They are part of the set given to me by my mother. They were given to me by my mother. Ouch. Just one minute, young man. How do I know that pot is mine? It matches your cups and saucers. Yes, but many pots look the same. There is something special about my coffee pot. And until you can tell me what it is, I refuse to believe you have truly carried out my request. I commissioned it. I commissioned it from Henri Latour. His work is exquisite. exquisite. Of course, I was much younger then. Do you want it back? I refuse <laughs> to discuss that until you prove you are my ally by bringing me the other item we discussed. How will I know when I found it? It's a secret. The item has special markings, but I won't tell you what they are. Just one minute, young man. How do I know that pot is mine? Bro, it has MM. Look at the fucking bottom of it, you ding dong. Did you guys see that? I don't think you saw it because it's like it's very an, powerful. It's like um, the the video. So, okay, right now you can't see it because it won't show up. But we zoomed in on the bottom of the coffee pot. It says M, and then there's a bird, and then it says M, and then there's a bird. Just put it over there with the cups. Thank you. Oops. Just one minute... There are two M's on it. Yes, anyone can see that. Each period is really a small bird. You are correct. I have told no one here about this, so you must have learned it yourself. My maiden name was Meryl Martin. My <laughs> mother named me for two of her favorite birds. Cute. When I married, she gave me this coffee set and said, you may change your name, but here's a small reminder that you will always be my little bird. That's so sweet. What the fuck? Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Was he your husband? Is. He is my husband. But when I turned 50, he decided he wanted to trade me in on a younger model. Ugh. He couldn't get a divorce without losing my money, so he cooked up a scheme to have me committed. He got Dr. Metcalf to go along, and so now he has his floozy and my money as well. Do you wonder why I'm bitter? <laughs> Is that legal? Didn't you know? It's very easy to get someone committed involuntarily to a mental asylum. Yeah. All it takes is two signatures and your rights are gone. Be careful, young man. This could happen to you. Can't someone get you out? Once you have been branded insane, the world looks at you differently. If you write letters, no one answers. If you make telephone calls, no one listens. Admit it. Even you aren't sure whether or not to believe me. Do you know anything about a secret room? I have some information that may help you. But first, I want you to help me. You've proven adept at recovering items that Malcolm has stolen from me. I would like you to recover the item that means more to me than anything else. It is a locket. Do you remember the ECT treatments? Oh, how could anyone forget? They would take you down to the basement 
and opened the door with a key that looked as if it could unlock the Bastille. Then they shoved a piece of rubber in your mouth and attached some wires to your head. The orderlies yes, just... would hold you down. Then the shock would come, like a white hot steel bar behind your eyes. Ten dentists drilling on exposed nerves couldn't cause this much pain. Oh, but but it's but it's to help them, right? It's it's to help them. What a fucking joke. Where do you think Malcolm hid the locket? There is a wall safe in Malcolm's office, behind the picture of his wife. There was a trick to opening it. He would press a certain spot on the frame. It would make a peculiar hollow sound, and then the picture would swing open. I believe the locket is in there. Okay. I feel so much better now that I have it back. It's empty. Yes, Oliver? What did you do to her? She is a classic paranoid schizophrenic. She suspects all authority figures of plotting against her. Her fears are groundless. Her fears are real. Why would you do that? You are being unusually obtuse, Oliver. You should know the answer to that by now. Why did you allow these bizarre treatments? You know so little of my work. You are hardly in a position to criticize. Nevertheless, I will tell you that we had one of the highest cure rates in the country. That which you regard as bizarre was actually highly effective therapy. Though not always for the reasons one would have anticipated. Yeah, but I mean, is it really worth it if people have to go through, like, the most unbearable pain? <laughs> like, is curing them really... Is it really what's best for them if they have to struggle for 20 years while they're here? Why can't they just live for free, dude? Even if they're fucking insane, at least they're happy. Even if it's fake. Sorry, I hit my mic. <clears throat> My finger hurts. Ouchie. Thank you, but I still lack <clears throat> a pen. Thank you. With both <clears throat> pen and ink, I can now write to Elizabeth. Oh, if only I had the handkerchief as well. Oh, it is a handsome quill indeed. <clears throat> Fuck's sake. 
Oh my god. Ouch. 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 Sorry. I really fucked up my finger. Oh, it's so over, guys. It's it's so it's so over. Where am I going? I'm going to d one. To one. It's so over. Your mother died. She's not here. I had it custom made in Florence. Your mother loved Italian craftsmanship. It sounds the same all over. Paranoid. Schizophrenia. Patient believed her husband and doctor plotted to have her committed. Electroconvulsive therapy. Deceased. Natural causes. We're obviously groundless. Was a physician of international re repute. And Mr. Kendall was one of the hospital's most generous patrons. Uh-huh. Delusional schizophrenic, grandiose patient believes she was Mary Queen of Scots, fever, therapy, metrazole, shock treatment, insulin, shock treatment, reason for discharge, deceased, she committed suicide. This will be, solutions were widely regarded by the staff as harmless, she did not appear to be violent, and the only precaution was that was taken to ensure her safety was the removal of her knitting needles. <clears throat> Yes, Oliver? Yes? No, I knew with her. <clears throat> Fuck, I don't know what to do about my thumb. Holy shit, it's over. Oh, it's so over. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's try to do this with my pointer finger and my middle finger. We were electrocuting her and she just suddenly died for no Welcome reason. To the big time, baby. Literally. This is where we separate the men from the boys. Okay, what the fuck? That's where the juice comes from. Fell off a perk. That's the frequency machine. They got a guy stands there who turns the dials so they don't match the numbers behind your head. If they do match, some kind of resonance thing happens. The machine blows a gasket, and they gotta go to Boston to fix it. 
<clears throat> it's the most fiendish torture device ever conceived by the mind of man. I've done the Hydra, solitary, fever therapy, the works. I'd rather do them all at the same time than sit in that chair for 10 seconds. Ooh, never let them get those babies on <laughs> your head. Once they're He's on, killed. you can keep fighting, but the game's already over. Whoa, you should see this baby when it's all lit up. Lights are flashing and sirens are going. Then they send about a <laughs> jillion volts right through your head. After that, you don't remember much for a few days. Then you remember too much. You can't see them while you're in the chair, <clears throat> but those are the numbers the frequency guy watches. That's the master switch. When they throw that sucker, you got exactly 90 seconds till the end of the world. The way I figure it, they brought in an expert special just to put the light in the exact spot to annoy you the most. That's the EEG machine. The doctors think it's a big deal, but the orderlies say it don't mean squat. That's vinegar. They use it to clean you off before they put on the conductive jelly. It'd be too bad if a little bit of dirt meant you only got one million volts instead of two. That's to catch the puke. Some guys really spew when the volts hit them. They don't look like much, but they're great to hang on to when the orderlies are trying to get you in the chair. That's conductive jelly. They smear it on your head before they attach the electrodes. Smells like crap, if you'll pardon my French. They don't look like... They tell you it's bad. Believe me, pal, it's worse. They tell you... They'd go through two or three of those each week. Hell, they got the damn settings wrong once, and I bit clear through a brand new one myself. Mouth guards were provided for the comfort of the patients. <coughs> My ass! There's nothing like a shiny piece of cold metal on your chest, first thing in the morning. Hello! The basic stethoscope has changed surprisingly little through the years. <coughs> it is believed that this one belonged to the superintendent himself. Leave it alone. You don't know where it's been. I do. Electroconvulsion therapy has its roots in the shock treatments that were developed in the 1930s, invented by Hugo Soletti and Lucio Pini, who adapted their first device from a pair of tongs used to stun hogs in a slaughterhouse. Oh my god. <laughs> the treatment induces a convulsion by passing an electric current through the brain. By 1950, over a 175,000 people in the United States were being administered ECT on a regular basis. The mechanism by which ECT works is not known. The treatment is generally administered twice or three times a week until the patient improves or until it becomes clear that further treatment will be ineffective. Like other treatments for depression, ECT is not a permanent cure. The rate of relapse is fairly high. Studies suggest that as many as a third of the most severely depressed patients relapse within four months and half within a year. The equipment. 
Most of the machines in this room were designed by Dr. Metcalf and built to his specifications. Naturally, the modern equipment used to deliver ECG is considerably more compact and reliable. The generator in back provided the electricity, but the current it put out varied so much that an additional operator was needed to monitor its frequency to ensure it did not match that of the ECT machine itself, as this would set up a resonance that would shut parts of the machine down. The chair is made of wood. It is not insulated in any way as the shock only travels a very short distance through the patient's head and there is no danger of electrocution to the operator. Indeed, attendants manually restrained the patient's arms because strapping them down resulted in too many injuries during the convulsive portion of the therapy. The EEG machine on the right has changed very little from Dr. Metcalf's day to day. It still measures how it still measures low delta, theta, and alpha up to the fast beta brain waves the procedures the patient was not allowed breakfast on the day they were to receive treatment upon arriving in the treatment room a conductive paste was smeared on his temples and he was seated in the chair the patient's chest was strapped down but not his arms these were restrained by attendants because the inflexibility of mechanical restraints invariably led to injuries a mouth guard was placed in the patient's mouth to ensure he did not bite through his tongue Upon power up, the headset containing the electrodes would lower onto the patient's head and the countdown to the actual shock would begin. Duration and intensity of the shock were estimated on a case-by-case -case basis by the operator of the equipment. Side effects. The most pronounced side effect of ECT is memory loss, both short-term and long-term. Some patients report memory gaps covering the time immediately before treatment, while others lose memories from earlier periods of their lives. A patient typically recovers consciousness quickly after the treatment, but he is confused or dazed and may experience headaches for the remainder of that day. Almost all patients can continue to perform routine functions after receiving ECT, although more complex skills like playing the piano are sometimes impaired. There are historical accounts of ECT being used to subdue and punish patients with particularly troublesome individuals receiving several shocks in a single day. However, there were no records of such behavior occurring at Blackstone. Yeah, fucking right. Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ, Jesus Christ. They tell well, look what the cat dragged <clears throat> in. What did you do? That's the outside. Forget the outside. The game's in here. And if you lose, you lose it all. It seems too serious for that. If you don't treat it like a game, you'll go crazy. It's Jesus. all you against the system. Don't give up. Never say die. Don't you dare let the bastards win. The truth is, they're not that smart. So it's not too hard to outthink them. Except Metcalf. He's the smart one. Isn't the game rigged? They think they're holding all the cards. And they are. But that doesn't mean you can't flip over the table. <laughs> it sounds like you're proud of yourself. You're damn right I'm proud. I took every punch those turds could throw and came right back for more. They never licked Jack Kramer. And they knew it. Did they all fight back? Nah, most of them didn't have it in them. I remember one morning they found a woman in the ward, hanging with her head wedged between the transom and the door frame. They never figured out how she got there. I did it. It was an act of mercy. I wish someone had the guts to do the same for me. Her last words before I pulled away the chair, you know what they were? God bless you. 
did you ever get out? You sit in that chair with the electrodes clamped to your skin. And between the shocks, there's this strange odor. And then you realize that the last smell that's in your nostrils as you die is the stink of your own flesh burning. No, I didn't win. Nobody won. This is so terrible. Like, I didn't realize I was getting into this. <laughs> I thought this was going to be like, oh, this is a scary point and click game. And it's just sad. This shit is just fucking sad. During the period between treatments, when they supposedly saw improvements, did the patients ever say, yes, I feel improved. Please give me some more. Please, sir. More shocks to my brain, to my noggin, please. Christ. Fucking horrible. You're not listening to me, friend. Sitting in that chair opens up the gates of hell. Okay. Are you not? I'm gonna replay this audio. Were you an inmate? Yeah. <laughs> you mean what am I in for? I'm just old is all. I forget things. My wife died, my kids didn't know what to do with me, so I ended up here. What the fuck? Did they know what it's like in here? Are you nuts? You think I'd tell them that? They've done the best they could by me. They deserve to get on with their lives. Everybody's gotta die somewhere. I told them old Nick Brennan was doing Jesus Christ, you should be sent to a place for old people, not a mental fucking institution. I mean, surely they gotta be treating them a little bit better than fucking fever therapy. Holy shit. How did you get by? The first thing is, don't let them see you cry. They'll think you're depressed and start pouring pills down your throat faster than you can say Jack Robinson. Okay. Any other tips? Don't turn your back on that Metcalf guy. He talks civilized, but he's got a mean streak a mile wide. Did they know what they were doing? Are you kidding? They were shooting in the dark and we were the far wall. They didn't have a clue why people go haywire. Anybody got cured around here, it was because they were desperate to get away from the quack. Now don't do that. That's not even a good joke. They'd strap you in that thing, lower the box over your head, and just leave you there. They'd cut a hole in the seat so you could crap. The women were lucky they pee straight down, but the men pissed all over themselves because they couldn't get their hands free. That's where they keep all the medicines. They pretended it was scientific, but me, I think it was just mix and match. Take two swallows of that Ipecac and your lunch will be on the floor in no time. 
I don't know what's in that one, and I don't want to find out. That's industrial strength castor oil. One spoonful will give you the trots for a week. That's where they keep all the medicines. I remember Dr. Metcalf used to keep some kind of key in one of them drawers. I knew it was important, so I made up a way so I wouldn't forget. But all I remember now is the name Mandy Lee. It must have meant something to me at the time, but now I forget what it was. They all look kind of the same. You can see how I'd forget, can't you? Now, don't do that. It'll take you all night to root through them drawers. Think, man, think. Mandy Lee, it must mean something. They all look kind of the same. They all look kind of... Apothecary. The earliest theories of mental illness revolved around the history of the humors. Sickness, it was thought, was caused by an overabundance of one of the four essential fluids in the body. Blood, phlegm, choler, choler yellow bile, and the melancholy black bile. The most common method of bringing the fluids back into balance was bloodletting. Additionally, the patients were given purgatives to empty their bowels or emities to make them vomit. Great advances were made with the advent of metrazole and insulin shock treatments, and these in turn were eventually supplemented by various fever therapies. When not being used to administer these treatments, this room also served as solitary, an area to confine unruly patients until they calmed down. <sighs> fever therapy. Prior to World War I, an Austrian doctor named Julius Wagner von Areg became convinced that high body temperatures caused by fever would kill the infection that caused mental illness. He experimented on patients injecting them with tuberculosis, typhoid fever, recurrent fever, and erysipelas, but did not meet with success. After the war, he encountered a soldier with a different kind of fever, malaria. He drew blood from him and injected it into some of his patients. He reported that half of them improved. Wagner Drag's work was enthusiastically received and he was awarded the 1927 Nobel Peace Prize for medicine. Malaria therapy quickly became standard practice in treating schizophrenics and was not discredited as an effective treatment until many years later. Insulin coma therapy. Insulin coma treatment was developed by Manfred Sackle of Viennese uh, a Veni a Viennese doctor who had been using insulin as a tranquilizer for morphine addicts in withdrawal. When he accidentally gave an overdose to one of his patients, she went into a coma. When she recovered, Sakel thought he detected an improvement in her mental state. Sakel developed a course of treatment based on the hypothesis that inducing insulin shock in a patient somehow helped drive out mental illness. The treatment called for patients to be injected with enough insulin to send them into a coma. After an appropriate amount of time, during which the patient suffered a series of violent convulsions, the doctor injected the patient with a dose of glucose to counteract the insulin. Mortality for insulin treatment was about 6 per 1,000, and brain damage occurred when glucose wasn't injected fast enough in about 8.5 per 1,000. Metrazole shock therapy. In 1935, some fucking dude who was a Hungarian physician noted that epileptic patients rarely became schizophrenic. Believing that epileptic seizures somehow prevented psychosis, he set out to induce convulsions in, in schizophrenic patients through artificial means. He initially used camphor, but eventually settled on the synthetic preparation metrazole. Within a few years, metrazole therapy was being used extensively in the United States, and by 1940, virtually every mental institution included it in their treatment plans. Although the original belief that ep epileptics cannot become schizophrenic turned out to be false, the treatment was still very popular among hospital clinicians. The major drawback to the therapy were the injuries that accompanied the violent convulsions, mostly fractures of the femur, arm, 
scapula, spine, and jaw. Also, the cure rate proved to be roughly identical to the rate of spontaneous recovery, i.e. people who got better without treatment. Okay. Fuck this place. I fucking hate it here. I hate it here. I hate it here. Get me out. Get me out. I, uh... <clears throat> yes. What a terrible place to be. Your mother. Shut up, bitch. <clears throat> Your mother died. What was the four twenty five something? That was taken four twenty four fifty five. Four twenty four fifty five. Four twenty four fifty five. Okay. Oi. Hello? Four. Okay. Four. Twenty four. Was it? Twenty five. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. This is already going to be a pain in the ass. I can just tell. <clears throat> Four twenty-four fifty-two. No! Oh my god. Good thing they made this as asinine as fucking possible, right? Of course. Yeah. Great. Four. Twenty-four. Fifty-two. No, that's fucking 25. Cool. This is gonna be absolute fucking pain to do. Exciting. Oh my god, put me on four, you stupid bitch. Four? 24, 52. That's 20 fucking five. Four, twenty-four. Oh my God, fifty-two. Oh fuck! Holy shit! You have to get like your cursor if on it. A hole in the wall, Dad. Maybe I can make it bigger. You're a good boy, Josh. I'm proud of you. You're a good boy, Josh. I'm proud of you. Bro, like, you are so... I'm convinced we're dead. We have gotta be dead, dude. We've gotta be dead. It is a Fabergé egg. It looks delicate. But if you don't know the trick to opening it, it would take quite a bit of pressure to get it to crack. It's just an ordinary box. I don't know why that woman insists on calling it a casket. Your 
mother duck. It is a Fabergé egg. It looks delicate. It's just an ordinary box. It's just... It's locked. Bruh. Mandy Lee. Nicholas Brennan. Nicknamed Nick. Mrs. Mandy Lee. Daughter. Senile dementia. Patient suffered from Alzheimer's disease. Oh my god. Fever therapy. Deceased natural causes. <clears throat> Oliver? Curious. The word you seek is the thing itself. Huh? The word you seek is the thing itself. Okay, bro. There was a That's where they keep all the medicine. How? I guess that's not the one.
I guess I... I guess I... I guess... I guess... It's over. That's it. Now I remember. How could I forget my own daughter's address? It's too small to fit on the ring. No wonder he had to hide it. It's just an ordinary box. I don't know why that woman insists on calling it a casket. So you found it at last. Better hurry and get it back to buy before she decides she's Joan of Arc. Each of these vials contains a highly concentrated dose of a lethal biotoxin. One is snake venom. One is bubonic plague, the third is typhus, and the last is malaria. Unfortunately, without the labels, it is impossible to determine which is which. I wonder which you are injecting yourself with at this very moment. I'm sure you'll know soon. The concentration is such that the symptoms appear almost instantly. And if you don't administer the correct antidote within a few hours, you will certainly die. All right. That happened. Howdy. Nick Albe. Help me, Nick Albe. Look. It was a Yes, Oliver? What are the symptoms? First, you start to shiver or twitch, as if you had a fever. This is followed by muscular pain or cramps. Then nausea sets in, followed by general paralysis and death. What will I feel? Shivering, headaches, and dizziness are the early symptoms, followed by pain in the back or limbs. When vomiting begins and the patient begins to swell up and choke, the end is near. How will I know if that was the toxin? It starts with chills and a fever. Then comes a severe headache and generalized pain. Fatal cases degenerate quickly into delirium and coma, usually followed by cardiac arrest. What will happen to me? As you might expect, shaking and chills, followed by severe headaches. Towards the end, the patient sweats profusely, then lapses into delirium, followed by death. Yes, Oliver? What are those symptoms again? Shivering, muscle pain, nausea, and paralysis. What are the symptoms? Shivering, headaches, muscle pain, and nausea. I've forgotten the symptoms. Shivering, headaches, muscle pain, and delirium. 
Remind me of the symptoms? Shivering, headache, sweating, and delirium. Oh boy! Yippee! <clears throat> My hand hurts so bad. I like actually am kind of scared. Um, <laughs> and I don't know what to do. Um, so that's exciting. You are shivering, Oliver. That must be the first symptom of the biotoxin making its appearance. It's locked. Beautiful work. You are a loyal friend. My thanks for returning to me that which was stolen. One of the poisons has entered my body and I need to counteract it. Sir George had another box in which he kept the antidotes, but alas, I, I do not know where he kept it. I have a gift for you. What is it? I have been saving a file to saw through the window bars that I might escape on the day the King of Spain sends his soldiers. Now that I can write to Elizabeth, I will no longer need it, for I know I can rely on her clemency. Take it with my blessing. When you find your son, use it to escape this foul prison. Hey, Jay. Thanks for the sub. How might I find this file? It is concealed in a clever panel on my bedpost. Press the crown, and you will find it inside. Did Sir George ever speak of a special hiding place? The prisoner next door once told me she saw our jailer emerge from a false door, but I have not seen this myself. Go on, take it. It still looks sharp after all these years. There, that should work. Do you have a bit of a headache, Oliver? That's the second biotoxin symptom. You really should do something about that, you know. So it's not snake venom, because that's shivering and muscle pain. It's not bubonic plague, because that's... Oh. Okay, so it's not snake venom. It could be bubonic plague, shivering headaches. Typhus, shivering headaches, and malaria, shivering headaches. If we have muscle pain next, then it's not malaria. <clears throat> Which we're probably going to have muscle pain next. So it's probably between typhus and bubonic plague. Excuse me. <clears throat> it is this. Where is she? Do you still feel ill? I know there are those who believe I'm not in my right mind. But my world here is what I have made it. Only because the real world is so much harsher. Please do not judge me for creating the best place I can. Well, I would never judge you. I would never fucking judge you for that. 
You're so real for that, actually. And what they did here was evil. Actually, fucking evil. Do you understand where you really are? I understand that I am not free. I understand I cannot walk among the flowers and trees, nor sit on the hill at sunset and wait for the stars to appear. I cannot move without people watching. When I am allowed to speak, my words are examined for hidden meanings. I understand I must obey orders and ask permission almost to breathe. All my life, I dreamed of setting aside my responsibilities, of having others make decisions for me. Now that this dream has become reality, I understand how foolish I was to give up my freedom. Well, you couldn't have known. The fuck? My fucking hand hurts so fucking bad. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move. Uh, I'm gonna move my mouse to the left side of my screen, or my keyboard. And I'm gonna try to point and click. It's a good thing I'm playing a point and click. Um, I'm gonna try to point and click with my left hand, baby. Let's go. Alright. This is fucking awkward. Alright, so right click is left click, and left click is right click. Okay, okay. Oh, this is difficult. Okay. What do we need to do 